are you? Really, how are you? How are you feeling during this COVID-19? You know, this COVID-19 we thought was gonna be what, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. I mean, where has 2020 gone? This is a time where we start reflecting on what have we accomplished in 2020? And where do we wanna go from here, right? It's getting to be ready to start school year. So it's a transition from summertime to fall. And we gotta really start thinking about our plans for the new year. Well, it's kind of been kind of crazy, hasn't it? I mean, what, what are we doing? What are you thinking? How are you feeling? How are you coping? Well, you know, recently, I've been surrounded by a, a lot of young people. I mean, you know, that generation, what are they called, Z? Do you know what the Generation Z is? <laughs> They're the newcomers coming into this earth. They're like anybody born after 2001. And I swear, you know, when we started looking at Generation X and Y, and now they got Z, I guess they ran out of the cool names like baby boomers and millennials, <laughs> you know, they had to go X, Y, Z, who knows what's gonna happen next. But when you started looking at these young children, I'm just amazed at how they can release anger and fear and all of that, just like that. They don't have a problem with it. And I, I've always said in my healing business that the young people like under 30, 35, they're here to change this world. They are going to change our universe, let me tell you. And we need to be paying kind of attention to them. So I looked up a little bit about what the Generation Z is to these young people because I see these young people have gone through things that really should make them angry and that they should be a victim and they should hold on to this anger with these people. And they're not, they're full of forgiveness and it's okay. And it's like, I'm so impressed. And like my grandchildren, I'm learning from my grandchildren. They let go of anger. They don't hold it in. And obviously I've learned recently that, yeah, I learned how to hold in my anger, push it under the carpet, not deal with it. So that's why I'm a big emotion code person, you know, let's pull out these emotions and deal with it. But in our class the other night, I realized I'm still doing it. I didn't even recognize that I'm doing it. So are you guys doing that? Are you feeling that anger? Are you feeling that resentment? Are you feeling all the frustration that's in the world today? You know, most of you, if you're here, you're an empath, which empath means you're feeling that, whether you know it or not. I've come to realization with that. I'm feeling all this. So these Generation Zs, they're realist. They know that they're in charge of their own happiness. We all know that too, right? but they're living the reality of it. And so I'm just so proud of them for doing that. You know, the media doesn't give us the true, pick, in my opinion, okay, the media doesn't give us the true opinion. We need to look out at the people that surround us and see what the real story is. And I'm really impressed with the real story that surrounds me, let me tell you. So they are full of forgiveness. And they know that they're in charge and they'll put their foot down too, if they need to. So how are you handling all this stuff? Are we still stuck in our old ways of pushing things down and, and probably ignoring it? I mean, that's what I do. I ignore it, pretend like it doesn't exist and then I don't have to deal with it, right? Yeah, until it comes into a pain or a disease or, a, or something that then you have to deal with because that's how we learn about emotions. But this little church, the Metaphysical Chapel of Life, that all of you are here, is so cool because it offers so many different lectures of so many different perspectives of how you can cope and who you can be and how you can be. And it's so exciting. So just recently, I attended our metaphysical psychic development class by Reva Stewart. Wow, 
Well, and if you haven't been lately, you need to come. All of our members are here today, I think, because I told them I was so touched by the class. I'm, that's what I'm lecturing about. My lecture was going to be, of course, you know, about emotions and how to release them and let it be and all that kind of stuff. But, and in this class, that's what we did as a development class. We sat and said, what are you doing? What are you doing to help release these emotions? What are you doing to help release this anger? And it was cool to brainstorm about what everybody's doing at this time. It was really interesting to see all the different ways that people are learning to cope and, and figuring out and all, all the different ways of healing. It's just so cool that there's so many different ways of healing. So we talked about the tapping and we talked, Susan shared with her the, I think, okay, Susan, you might have to name it. <laughs> and even, you know, Stephanie shared about the showers and taking a karmic shower. My grandma, I mean, my granddaughter calls it a karmic shower. And I just think, I, I don't know, I just love them and even Stephanie said, I'm so glad to hear somebody doing the same thing I'm doing. I mean, sometimes I have to take two to three showers a day just to wash it all off, <laughs> just wash off all that energy because the energy kind of like just sucks you in and sometimes you can't get rid of it, right? So a shower is the perfect way to just wash it all away and start all over again or a nap. Now, I don't think it's my age that's causing me to take these naps, but I really think it's a reset. A naps are a reset of your energy. You can start again fresh. Stephanie even reminded us about the RAIN program where, you know, we are all walking around in a trance of unworthiness. I mean, that's, we've, we've learned that we're unworthy. That's our belief deep down inside. We might not think it right now, but we are. And we're living in this trance where we're not really even realizing that we're walking in this trance of unworthiness, of not being good enough. I mean, that's been my main thing during this COVID thing. It's been like, come on, when does it get over with, you know? So are you guys kind of feeling the same way that you're not good enough to step out and do what you are meant to do, what God has put you here to do? And so, Part of the class, too, was talking about how do we make that connection to God? How do we listen to that intuition that is shared with us? Now, one of the greatest things I learned when I started on the spiritual path is the fact that God is not a judgmental God. That all these beliefs that I had that I wasn't good enough, that I was fighting the entire time to try to be saved is not really the truth. It's a lot of lies that have been given to us, right? But do we still have that core belief that was taught to us that we're not good enough, that we're always fighting to be get approval? You know, and when does that happen? So is that what we live with every day? So part of the thing that I've been doing is truly making a connection to my God, my source, my infinite intelligence, my angels, my spirit guides, my, 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 right? But one of the lovely ladies in the class, which I will remain nameless, if that's okay, she just said something that touched a nerve with me. And she said that she talks to the wise woman within. Oh, I'm going to cry. I'm sorry. I'm going to cry. <laughs> I don't want to. She's going to talk to the wise woman within. And, you know, we talk all the time about don't give away your power. No one can tell you how you connect to spirit, how co spirit connects to you. I mean, I learned all those they sayers and those they people are on my blacklist right now. I don't listen to those they people. But you know what? It's part of your belief system. 
So here is this woman that says, you know, I talked to the wise woman inside of me. What? Really? The wise person inside of you, your higher self, you know, I never, I, I understand our connection to our higher self. I, I, you know, I understand it's, you know, kind of like hard to comprehend, but we do have a wise person living inside of us that is connected to the divine. What kind of power is that, right? Are you empowered when you can say, you know what? I'm going to connect with the wise person inside of me, my higher self. Now, I know that my higher self is also connected to my angels, to God, to the divine, to everyone that works with me. But something about that, talking to that person inside of you, all of a sudden a light went off and said, wow, that is so empowering. Can you imagine the, the power that you have when you say that? When you are looking at yourself and you're going, you. Now we look in the mirror, right? And we listen to that self that says you're not good enough. We listen to that self that says you're not pretty enough. We look at that self that says, look at those wrinkles. We talk to that person, right? But let's take some time to talk to our inner being that is our higher self, that is pure, unconditional love for us. I mean, you know, every during this COVID thing, I have really spent a lot of time healing healing myself and I'm sure a lot of you have gone uh, have done that too because you're looking inside you know maybe that's what this COVID thing was all about right to slow things down and say hey let's look inside what is it that you want to be what is it that you want to do so I ran across the I am I am that I am and I am the worst one with words, let me tell you, because I can be the first one to say, I am not good enough. I am not educated enough. You know, I'm the first one that says that. But now I want to say in affirmations about who I really am. And I want to make that connection with my inner self, my higher self who knows who I am. And to sit there and to think about, she sits there and has a conversation. She actually has a conversation with her inner self. Now, can you imagine how much power that would be if we sat and said, the first thing comes out of our mouth, well, Jenny, you're just not feeling it today. You're not doing well today. You don't look good today, whatever. And you could go, wait a minute. My higher self wants to come in and talk to you about that. That is not the truth. You know, could you imagine the power, the empowerment you would have with that? You know, no, I'm not going to be sick today. No, no, no. I have better things to do. Me and God have a plan and we're following the plan. Can you imagine that power? I mean, I just... I was so, that class was so cool, and it, it was just, if you guys are missing these classes, you need to come, because it might be just one little tidbit of information that you receive, that all of a sudden is like, whoa, that's the, that's the light bulb that went off, that's the aha moment for me, I don't know why, but it was, it was the aha moment for me, so I am. Those words are so, so, so powerful, right? I am. But remember that when you are saying that I am in a negative sense, it also manifests that. It manifests what your beliefs are, what your reality is. So if your reality is living in negative and living in anger and living in hatred, that is your reality. But if you change those beliefs and you believe in honesty and you believe in fairness and you believe in love, that will be your reality. That will be your perception. That is what you will see. Now, 
I'm not preaching to you guys because you know, it's all about me. And I'm the one <laughs> that I'm having major problem. Complain, I try, you know, I'm the first one pointing finger at everybody and say, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. And guess what? Three of those fingers pointing back at me <laughs> as I'm pointing. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. And I'm the first one to complain. And I believe that it's a habit. It's a habit that we get into and we forget. And some of you are so, so advanced in your awakening that you know that you don't do that, right? You know, you are beings of love and light. Some of us are still hiding it. Some of us are still learning. So these classes are an amazing thing to allow us to do that. So, um, I wanted to close with the power of the words, I am. So remember that, I am. And when you connect with that higher self, when you are making that connection, that, that higher self is only of love, of only of peace, and only of joy. So when you hear that negative Nelly is always talking, just tell her, no. I have a wiser person in front of me. I have one that knows the truth about who I am and how I'm supposed to be. I am that I am, which means I will be what I'm meant to be. So just remember, I, it's the, and when you're listening to your higher self, just follow follow their intuition because you never know what's going to happen. And if you are getting intuition to start a new job or to open up a new door or do something different, if you don't do something different, it will always remain the same. I always love insanity is doing the same thing and expecting a different result, right? <laughs> that is definitely insanity. So Let's look at the blessings of this time. The blessings that we've had to spend time with ourselves, and with our family, and do the healing, the healing that was meant for us during this time. And when we're ready to bust free, we will have had this connection with our inner self. We will have built that connection with our higher self. And we will know what is right for us. And we will follow that. So this week, what I want you to do is, first of all, I want you just to take a deep breath. In. And I want you to ask your question, who am I? I am unconditional love. I am peace and I am joy. And we know that we're all connected. And deep down inside, we all want the same thing, don't we? We all want a peaceful life. We all want a joyous life. We all want to treat each other the way we want to be treated, right? That's what we all want deep down inside in our core, that's what we want. So I want you to take this time and I just appreciate Reva. I appreciate everyone in that class because it really was a light bulb going off for me. Not, and I didn't mean to say anything about my spirit guides. I don't want my spirit guides to leave me now, okay? Because I deal with my spirit guides all the time. I deal with my spirit loved ones all the time. I love them, love them, love them. But I just love taking the power of the divine God inside of me and using that power for me. I am. I am that divine God source. I am that infinite intelligence. I am that unconditional love. So just breathe into that and just take it with you this week.